Welcome to Let's Talk Kashrus. Today we are joined by Rabbi Shalom Tenler, Kashrus Administrator at the Star K in Baltimore and the Co-Chairman of the ACO Toilam Committee. Thank you, Rabbi Tenler. That's quite a title, by the way, Co-Chairman of the ACO Toilam Committee. What exactly does one have to do to qualify for that position? First, I have to pay for my train ride to get here. No discounts. <laughs> Okay, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that we have a whole oilum in the world of conscious. A lot of people that are involved in conscious, something that we're very busy with. And there's always been a push to keep some level of organization to the information that's coming in. What is the latest updates? On the, we're talking about Tailam specifically, specifically, which for the uninitiated is insect infestation in food. Correct. Correct. So um, it's, a, it's a dynamic field that's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. It's as changing as the world of food is changing, as agriculture is changing, as the weather is changing, which is the one thing that ACO even understands they don't try to have control over is the weather. So we're not going to have control over that. And that directly affects infestation levels. So trying to stay on top of that is a big idea, something agencies are very busy with. Mm -hmm. So to have a formal committee, which is something they've always had, um, and to stay on top of it, the facts of figures of what's going on in the world of infestation is something that it makes sense to have a dedicated committee involved in it. So chairman, vice chairman, non-chairman, <laughs> and it doesn't really make that big of a difference. The bottom line is there's a whole cover of guys who are, who are part of our jobs is to be involved in the vegetable checking industry. And so we share the information and we share with the rest of the conscious world. So and it's a, v it's a very important topic because as, as we've stressed in this forum and as has been stressed in many conscious forums, Tailam is a serious issue. It's, uh, it's six Slavin in the Torah, no less. So this is really an important topic that we're going to be yeah, discussing Yeah, definitely. Today. They say, Shalom used to always say, if you have a choice between eating a bug and a cheeseburger, go for a cheeseburger. It tastes better and it's less Slavin. Uh -huh. So, you know. So we don't recommend either, but obviously. I don't recommend either, <laughs> obviously. But obviously, uh, the point is well taken. Now, a common question that we've gotten here at Let's Talk Kashras is related to frozen fruit. Very often you'll find frozen fruit in packages in stores without any hashkacha. May one purchase frozen fruit without a, uh, a hashkacha, and the same with vegetables that maybe are not so uh, infested, you know, typically. So if there's no insect concern in the fruits or vegetables, then it's 100% fine. Um, Can you give a practical frozen example? Mangoes. Frozen mangoes. Frozen are mangoes are okay. Frozen mangoes do not need hashkacha. As long as there's no other additives or ingredients, they're fine. Um, for Pesach might be a different discussion, but if there's really no other additives other than, let's say, mangoes, the famous question we get thousands of times a year, Trader Joe's frozen mangoes, right? No ashkoch yeah. on them, they're okay year-round and for Pesach, nothing else in there. Um, the same thing would apply for vegetables, and the reason for that, even, if, even for things like onions, or things that are davar charif, and people are concerned, the knives, things like that, uh, vegetable companies and fruit companies, generally speaking, only process fruits and vegetables. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything else going on in the plant. They're not sharing the equipment with other no. processes? No. <coughs> no. No. It's it, allergen concerns. There's other USDA concerns. They don't share their equipment with anything else. That's all they do. So there's no conscious concerns other than insects. So frozen peaches, frozen mangoes would be fine. Frozen strawberries, frozen raspberries, blackberries would obviously be a major problem. Um, now, the freezing process itself does absolutely nothing to get rid of the insects. So for the conversation regarding bugs, fresh and frozen is really 100% exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So that's something that is now important you to you know. You mentioned onions. Frozen onions that you bought in a store without ashkocha are typically okay? 100% fine. Okay. Forget about Lena's Lila issues. That's okay. a different conversation. But okay. yes, other than that, there's no conscious concerns with frozen onions either. Mm -hmm. Blending. There seems to be some kind of conception out there. Rightly or wrongly, you're gonna, Rabbi Teller is going to tell us about blending items that I buy in the store that somehow it obviates any concern of Tailam. Is that true? So that's part of the misconception in regards to frozen. And the reason for that is because there is a conversation to be had about frozen. And us usually frozen is associated with blending. So those two conversations sort of come together and lead to this misconception. So let's clarify it. And if you want further research, you can take a look at the most recent issue of Kasher's Currents, which came out last week, where there's actually an article um, there detailing this whole thing. So we'll give a summary of that article. And the summary is basically is that it depends how, what kind of fruits you're talking about. Let's talk about frozen strawberries, which is maybe the number one or maybe the second most popular fruit to blend in the United States of America. And uh, this is like some statistic out there. They say mm -hmm. banana might be the other one. That's oh, the really? that's the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, bananas is no problem. But strawberries. So frozen strawberries, as long as they're non-organic, they're conventional strawberries. Um, you can buy any frozen strawberry you want. It does not need to have ashkacha, and you can make a smoothie out of it. Really? And the reason for that is a little technical detail in Allah, and that is is because if obviously there's you're not allowed to nullify a prohibited item like a bug on purpose. There's an iser to do that. However, if your intention is not to do that, your intention is only to make yourself a smoothie you're not focusing on trying to get rid of the bugs here, then you're allowed to do that. 
So it's not considered a mavalin l'sol chachila. It's not considered a mavalin l'sol chachila, assuming that it's only on the level of what's known as mira matzu, which is a derabana, meaning it's not infested to the level of this item being most of the time infested. It's infested between ten and about the way we ta- say about it is ten to fifty percent of the time. What's known as mira matzu, so it's only derabana. So the way the shach says it in your day is that if it's mira matzu, which is only derabana, there's no problem of being mavatel l'sol chachila if it's ain't kavanos levatel. So you can buy frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries. Right, that they're, are they're considered miramatsi. Miramatsi, you can blend them, make smoothies out of them, 100% fine. Now, the caveat is two things. Number one is that if you're buying them because you want to eat them whole, and then you get home and realize, hmm, I didn't realize I can't eat them whole. Now I want to blend them. That's a shiloh to be asked because now your kavan is really to get get around the bug problem. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a different question. Ask your local orthodox rabbi that question if it comes up. Um, the other thing is, is that other items which would be muhsuk betalayim, which are higher, more infested, which would be, let's say, organic frozen strawberries or any raspberries or blackberries, those, that leniency doesn't necessarily apply. Um, you could have a conversation about it, but generally speaking, according to the shach we're relying on, he's not going to say it by something that's muhsuk betalayim. So there you wouldn't be able to make a smoothie unless you're buying raspberries or blackberries, which come with hashkacha that says they've already been checked, which, to my knowledge, doesn't exist. How would a homemaker watching this from their home know whether something is a, is a mira matzo or not with regard to these different types of fruits? Um, it, it's, it, that's a pretty, it's a pretty short list. You know, it's pretty, I mean, at least, in, you know, of what we're used to, the more you common You short things. list of the acceptable items? I, I mean, the problematic items, let's oh. say strawberries, generally speaking, strawberries and blueberries would be mira matzi, raisins and blackberries would be mochsuk. Okay. Anything organic, let's say organic strawberries would also be mochsuk. Why, why is that, by the way? Why is organic different than regular? Because organic, they don't use as many pesticides, so they're more oh. highly infested. Okay, got it. So after that, you know, feel free to bring other items into the picture, but I'm not aware of so many other items that are popularly found that are used for this that would fall into this question. Juicing is a different conversation where you have other kinds of f- vegetables, particularly like de- kale, cilantro, or things that people are going to juice. They're not directly blending it up, they're more like crushing it and getting the juice out of it. Um, the process also is you could do it in certain ways that allow la lacha. The problem is those are generally more highly infested vegetables. Um, take a look at the Conscious Currents article, it deals with it more. Um, juicing is less popular than blending, so we can leave the conversation at that for now. Another misconception is going to be that. Um, like sort of we discussed that if you blend anything that's frozen, frozen somehow kills the bugs and destroys the bugs and gets rid of the bugs, which is completely not true. Freezing process actually uh, perfectly preserves the insects. We have a company that we certify um, that makes uh, uh, um, like basil and all kinds of stuff. They freeze it down to negative 20 degrees and the mashkir takes samples after it's frozen because that's just the process is one long process, washing, freezing. Then he takes samples and he checks it and find perfectly preserved bugs after being frozen to negative 20 degrees. And I, I have checked this with entomologists in universities. Freezing preserves bugs perfectly. Heat destroys, but freezing actually preserves them perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to be buying something that's frozen, don't assume it's bug free. Um, blending, you could reference the earlier part of the conversation about. So if you could give us a, a let's talk kashras takeaway, one or two points that people at home watching could take from our conversation, two, two or three points that are practical that they could apply to their own kashras adherence. Um, number one, I would say is that, you know, summer's coming up, you can buy any frozen strawberries that you want and make yourself a smoothie. Okay, that's something that people always appreciate. Frozen strawberries. Frozen strawberries. Okay. Um, fresh, I mean, you can't make a smoothie out of fresh strawberries. Well, okay. okay. So that's just <laughs> housekeeping point, right? So Doesn't frozen, work. non-organic strawberries. Non-organic, frozen, non-organic strawberries. Okay. Um, you could do that. Um, another point I would say is that people don't necessarily appreciate how much work and effort goes into making sure your fruits and vegetables are free from insects. Mm-hmm. So when you see something that's certified and don't think, oh, it's really the same thing. They're just putting a hexer on it. There's a lot of work that went into that bag. And, you know, we do our best to make sure it's insect-free, but it's not like you could have the same brand. Some of them have a hexer, some of them don't have a hexer. The one that has a hexer went through an entirely different process yeah. to get that hexer, even though the bag otherwise looks the same. That's something people should appreciate and realize because this is something in general and conscious. People find, you know, one bag of potato chips has a hexer, one bag doesn't, the same bag. It must be the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's not true. It's not true really in anything, but for sure not in the vegetable industry. So that's something people should also keep in mind. Okay. Thank you so much, Rabbi Tenler, for your insight, sure. for your help, and uh, I'm excited that we could buy strawberries. That's <laughs> Lacharaba. Thank you so much.